Joe, welcome back from your vacation. You've been gone for a few weeks in uh, Quiet Light Brokerage. Absolutely nothing happened because you aren't here. <laughs> you didn't miss me at all. I, I think I had an email reminder or a phone notification in there. I said, if you, if you really need me, find me on WhatsApp. And no one needed me at all, which is very humbling. The reality is that we think we're really important to the cogs of the wheel. And uh, if there's enough cogs, you're not. So uh, nobody missed me at all. Well, the truth is, actually, people would email you, and then they would uh, you know, get my email. And then I was home that they don't want to work with you. They actually want to work with me. Uh, so I've, I've just been picking off all of your potential clients. I love it. No, take all those $10 million listings. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate it, too, very much. And so does my wife. Um, anyways, I, this week, I want to talk about something uh, that we've seen a lot of with, with uh, Amazon sellers. Right, we look at these PLs, and oftentimes what you see are these revenue lines um, on the PLs, where it's your typical Amazon sales coming through, and then you see this Amazon UK or Amazon Europe or something like that, and you see some revenue kind of pop and then trail off after a while. And when you talk to the the client or the seller about this, the backstory is always the same. Well, I thought about expanding to Europe and UK, but I didn't really gain traction there, and boy, just, it was just a lot more work than I really anticipated. So. Uh, we've decided not to really do that. The fact is, though, Amazon UK, Amazon Europe, Amazon Canada, and some of these other countries are really, really good expansion opportunities, but you have to go about it the right way. And that's not always as straightforward as putting the product up and launching that store. You talk to somebody who you guys went over exactly that process. How do you actually expand into in other markets on Amazon? Yeah, it's uh, Kevin Sanderson from Maximizing E-Commerce. Uh, he's uh, affiliated, associated with with Scott Volker, who we enjoy from the Amazing Seller and Brand Accelerator Live. And, and, and what Kevin talks about is just that, okay, if you're going to expand, start here, then go there, and then go there, uh, so that you're getting your feet wet and doing it in a way where you're learning without um, getting so frustrated you just throw your hands up and walk away, which, as he said, I see too often. Interestingly enough, yesterday I'm doing a, a valuation call, and exactly what you talked about, revenue, you, revenue line for Amazon.com and uh, Amazon uh, Europe overseas. And there were three or four months of revenue. It started to climb, 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 and then nothing because that particular individual just got frustrated. She didn't think that she was going to get her bang for a buck there uh, because it was so complicated and confusing for her. Uh, the reality is she took on too much uh, all at once. Kevin's approach is more methodical. Uh, and I like it. It's simple. It's clean. It's logical. It's not going to be uh, earth shattering for anybody listening. Um, but what it is going to do is going to give them reinforcement to what they probably already know and what they should do and hopefully will will do as well. Yeah, a fantastic topic. We do have a shout out to give to somebody who guessed the, uh, the right intro uh, to one of our podcasts. And you got that email, Joe. I did. It's from Western, Western, Weston Woodoff. I'm, I've got a cold after this vacation. Imagine that. Weston Woodoff, he sent me an email actually while I was on vacation. It is one of the very few emails that I checked. He guessed the founder, which is the story of uh, McDonald's, the movie clip. Uh, so shout out to you, Weston. Thanks for listening. Appreciate all the kind words. And I assure you, we will get more people that bought uh, e-commerce businesses or online businesses from us and we'll get them back on the podcast six, 12 months after that's something that he said he enjoys listening to Mark and wants to hear more of. Yeah. And you know, I, I went to a meetup, a shout out to the people that I met up with, uh, for the Rhodium Minneapolis, uh, Red Cow Burgers, uh, meetup, uh, just a couple weeks ago, got some good feedback on the podcast there as well. You know, the point here being not to say, uh, guys, you have to praise us because we need it for our egos more of what do you want to hear? And I got some really good feedback on that. Uh, if you guys have stuff that you want to hear uh, or a style of podcast that really uh, stands out to you, let us know. Send us an email. Um, we do listen to that. We want to create content that's useful for you um, and, and helpful. And then again, keep guessing those movie titles. That should be fun. Uh, Founders, uh, Founder is a great movie uh, as well. Highly recommend it for anyone that loves entrepreneurship. And we actually respond to the emails. It's inquiries at quietlightbrokerage.com. Mark and I get those personally. We also have our own personal email addresses, which is really complicated. Joe at quietlightbrokerage.com or Mark at quietlightbrokerage.com. And Mark has a K, not a C. Um, 
I spelled the right way. You do spell it the right way. Sorry, everybody else. All right, let's get to this. Uh, Kevin Sanderson, Maximizing E-Commerce, how to get your brand uh, safely and productively uh, in other uh, Amazon markets. Hey folks, Joe Valley here from Quiet Light Brokerage. And today we've got Kevin Sanderson from Maximizing E-Commerce on the podcast. Kevin, how are you today? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for having me. Where in the world are you? I am in uh, South-ish Florida, um, about 35 minutes north of West Palm Beach. All right. So we're recording at the end of July. So you're definitely inside the house as always, right? Oh yeah. It's nice and humid outside. So, uh, as I said in the uh, pre-call here that we don't do fancy intros, so why don't you uh, tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself, what your background is. Sure. So, I've been an e-commerce seller for about four years. Um, I remember when I got into the whole thing, I just happened to be looking at my phone at podcasts and this podcast called The Amazing Seller Podcast came up and I was like, this sounds interesting. So, I listened to it and I was like, this sounds like something I want to go towards and I went out to Walgreens um, and they were closing out the summer specials of like whatever they're going to close out to make room for back to school. And I bought a bunch of those blue uh, cooler thingies you'd use in your cooler to keep your cans cold. Okay. And in freezer. And I remember sending some of them, some of them off to Amazon with a few other things. And I got an email that my stock had been checked in. And I was playing with the app like most people do once yep. you start doing this for a while. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, keep seeing this zero, zero sales, zero dollars, all this. Then all of a sudden I refresh it and there's a one. And I was like, wait, someone bought it. And it was like <laughs> the day it got checked in. I was like, the, I, 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 I was like prepared like mentally, like it might take weeks or whatever. But this just like rush of adrenaline came over me. And I went running into the living room and my wife, I was like, you have to see this. And I almost like threw the phone at her. I was so excited. And at first, like she thought I was insane. Like it was just kind of like, where's my husband? Who is this person? But then she realized I was just excited about it. And then she kind of got it. And so from then on, I've been hooked in the whole e-commerce game. So it's that easy. Just go to Walmart, Walgreens, buy some stocked out items and put it on Amazon and you're in business. Everybody succeeds that way, right? Not yes. Enough. Yes. I came to learn there's more steps in the process for that. And I was like, one of the things I learned very early on in my retail arbitrage career, which was short lived, was that I didn't like having to keep finding stuff and yeah. sending it in. So at least what it did was it clicked the switch in my head that like, okay, this is possible. It's not just I'm hearing someone talking about it. I actually saw like the zero go to a one and it became real to me. Like, okay, now let's go after building my own brand. And so the the fall was coming up and at the time I was a high school football official and I decided to take a year's worth of earnings and put that off to the side to go towards my first product. And so from, let's say, February of the following year, which would have been 2016, I uh, you know, put up my own branded products and then I kept reinvesting into it. And then back in December of 2018, I left my job and I was like, I'm gonna do all this full time. And I now have about 80 products that I sell, 80 different SKUs, wow. as well as I sell um, mostly on Amazon, but still trying to diversify as much as possible. Uh, but one of the things that's been very, uh, successful for me is selling internationally. So I sell in Canada, uh, the five European marketplaces, Japan, and I'm about to launch in Australia and Mexico. Okay. And we're, that's what we're going to dig into today, folks, is how to expand beyond amazon.com into these other marketplaces. You know, I have, uh, multiple valuation calls uh, a week talking to people that are looking to exit someday. And uh, just yesterday I talked to somebody that uh, we, we have a, he's uh, or she's uh, a friend of Scott's Scott Volker from, from the amazing seller who you're friends with as well. Um, Mm -hmm. And you know, she tried to expand to, uh, to Europe and found that it was just too complex and complicated. So, um, it's it's funny. Um, one of the growth areas that Savvy 
not savvy. That's the wrong word because this person is actually very savvy. One of the growth areas that um, people with a ton of international experience see is international. They'll look at a Amazon business that's US only and they can see where it may plug into one of the European markets or all of them. Whereas others, they try it and they fail because it's just at a level of detail that is not good for them and their business and they stick to and focus on the US. You've set up a, a, a business format where you're helping people expand beyond the US. So um, talk to me about A, which country, because I have a couple in mind. I want to see which countries are best or if it's not that simple that different products are better for different countries. Well, there's a little bit of different products are um, best for different countries, but one simple thing people can do is if their product is selling in the U S and they just look up the keyword of how someone might find their product. So if they're selling garlic presses um, as our friend, uh, Scott would use, um, or fishing lures. They could look up garlic presses or fishing lures on amazon.ca or amazon.co.uk, which are the Canadian and UK versions of Amazon, and just go to Jungle Scout, and Jungle Scout will give you an idea. Now, don't get too caught up in the numbers, but what I would say is if you're making sales in the US and similar products to yours are making some sales internationally in those international marketplaces, it's at least worth evaluating, should I at least try? Now, to your point, there are some hoops you have to jump through. Um, one of the things I recommend to people if you're gonna start off with, go into Canada, because logistically, I personally find it easier. Um, they have what's called GST, HST, which is their goods and services tax, harmonized sales tax, it's all kind of the same thing, but it's, for the most part, most people are just going to have to register with the federal government there. And it works very similar to how sales tax would work in the U.S., except it's simpler for more, most people. And in most cases, they're only going to have to file for that sales tax once per year. So do you do, you do that just for the exercise of learning how to go international because it's easy? Because, uh, you know, is Canada, uh, are you going to get your bang for your buck there, right? Populations, 10% of the U.S. or, you know, you can expect 10% of your, your U.S. revenue in terms of Amazon. How, how do you, it, is there, is it, is it really worth it? Uh, and I know, I think I know the answer. I think I know what you're going to say, but I want to hear you say it. Is it really worth it in terms of dollars or is it a combination of dollars in revenue and the exercise of going international and getting comfortable with it? I would say all of the above. So the way I look at it is it, you have a net. And as you widen that net in the sea of Amazon, you're going to catch more fish. And some of those fish are exclusive to, and by fish, I mean customers, are yeah. exclusive. They're exclusive to, um, <clears throat> some of those are exclusive to Canada or they're exclusive to, the UK. And as you catch more of those fish, you're going to get more sales. So the way I like to look at it is if you, if you said, I'm just going to go into all the international marketplaces, if you try to do it all at once, it's going to be too much. Canada is relatively simple. I think it's a good place to get your feet wet. So what I did was I went to Canada and then I went to the UK. That which is their sales tax is a little more complex and there's more kind of like landmines you could go hit on um, that you don't want to. So it's best to start off with Canada, go into the UK, and then you can go into other parts of Europe and use UK as a base of operations. Um, and the nice thing is if you go into the other marketplaces in Europe, you will most likely have to translate your listings. Um, but at least if you're starting off in the UK and Canada, you're talking about two English speaking countries. So that also lowers some of the barrier. Okay. So, you know, you're saying a little bit of everything going into Canada. So I think it's a great idea that people start there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, and if all you do, if you're doing a hundred thousand dollars in discretionary earnings or profit folks, mm -hmm. and you expand to Canada and all it does is add $10,000, it's not hard. Kevin, will talk about it a little bit in terms of how to do it and can help people do it. Mm -hmm. But that additional $10,000 in discretionary earnings, if your business is worth a three-time multiple, you've just added $30,000 onto the overall value of your business if you decide to exit someday. 
Uh, but I like that baby stepping it, doing one country at a time, starting with Canada and then another English speaking country being the UK. Uh, as far as VAT, uh, it is complicated. We've done podcasts on it with Avask uh, Accounting, mm -hmm. uh, the folks over there. That's great, what I use. Great folks use them as well. I know Melanie, they uh, refer people back and forth to us. Anytime we've got someone buying a, uh, a brand that's uh, selling in the UK, we always connect people with them because they're good. And for folks, that's avaskaccounting.co.uk, A-V-A-S-K. Um, in terms of the next country, so you're going to go Canada, then you're going to go UK. Where do you go next? I would say most likely Germany. Germany outside of the UK is going to have some of the best sales yeah. um, in Europe. Now, now you're starting to get into um, a different language, but it, there, there's translation services out there. Amazon has some translation services, but there are some uh, asterisks that you might not actually be eligible for. Yeah. Um, Kind of strange. I don't think that I don't think the uh, the automated translation services work all that well, and here's why. I was just in France and uh, and Switzerland and used Google Translate. It kind of worked. I'm literally driving, you know, down the highway uh, from I think the airport to uh, to Paris, uh, and and I'm I'm in the car with an Uber driver, and he's got Google Translate up on his phone. I've got it up on mine. I say something, and it spits it out in French, and we're having this weird conversation but it didn't quite fully translate it properly. So I couldn't imagine using an, a translation service as an automated translation service like that. What kind, of, what, what, what kind of experience do you have with that? If you're gonna translate something to German, do you hire uh, individual people that are you know, native speakers or do you use a translation service? So I've tried all kinds of different things. I've had Amazon help me with translations and theirs is essentially machine in most cases. Okay. But in the ones I've seen, it's machine translated and then a person checks it. Now the issue is who's checking the checker. So if you're um, English speaking and you're trying to check whether or not German is correct, so it's gotta be a reputable translator. Um, I, I've found a German translator that I've had good luck with and I had someone else check it. So if you find, let's say on Upwork or Fiverr or something, and you have someone translate something for you, see if you can hire someone else to critique it. Or if you know someone who speaks German or Spanish or whatever language you want to translate, have someone else verify it for you. And then you know, okay, now I've got someone good. I've got, um, actually, oddly enough, in the um, office building I work out of, uh, there's a translation company down the hall that actually they've worked with American Translator Association um, translators and they have contracts with all the uh, court systems and they've done stuff for GE and Disney and a bunch of other companies. So they're rep I I've found them to be pretty reputable too. But if you're not a hundred percent sure, always have someone else check it. Even if you're hiring, let's say on Fiverr and you give like a paragraph of stuff, you could hire three or four people and have them check against each other and whoever's getting the best vote out of everyone else is probably the one to go with. Awesome. I think that's a great idea. It's, uh, there's been times I've looked at Amazon listings and I could tell it's been written by somebody that does not um, speak English as their native tongue. And uh, it's, it's obvious and I lose confidence and I don't necessarily want to buy that product. I imagine it's the same. Right. Somebody's in, in Germany uh, thinking it. Uh, I, I, as far as the countries go, I know that, um, you know, one product is not going to be perfect for all countries, mm -hmm. but I, from a brokering standpoint and what I've seen over the last several years is that Germany stands out, um, mm -hmm. amongst all of the European countries as the one that seems to bring, um, people that are exiting that have the most, you know, sizable business, sizable revenue. Um, why do you, why do you think that is? Is there something about the the German marketplace that makes it stronger and larger than the other marketplaces? Is it population? Is it because of the uh, affluent nature of the individuals in that country, or what, is it just pure happenstance? I think it's a combination of several different things. So I think as to just take, take a step back, as you go outside of the U.S. and you have more hoops to jump through fewer people want to take those hoops. And then as you start getting into other marketplaces that aren't English, now that's another hoop you have to jump through of getting it translated. Um, so 
fewer and fewer sellers, I think, are willing to do that from what I've found. And so you have less competition. So then combined with, I think, the population size and the people in Germany, um, I still do better in the UK than I do in Germany. It could just be my product. Um, but to your point, I've heard people say the opposite. So it just depends and you never know until you test it. Okay. All right. So first step, go to Canada, give it a shot. Second, UK. And then third, another country, Germany. Um, what services are out there? How do you expand? What, what steps do you recommend uh, someone take in order to go through this process of expanding? And, and how, like how much time would you give it? We've talked about three countries here so far. Mm -hmm. What kind of time frame would you give that in terms of you know, checking those off and, and, and moving and expanding into those countries? Well, if you're doing it alone, what you would do is you would first register with whatever governmental agency you need to register with. So like if it's Canada, you go to the Canadian Revenue Agency and register for what's called non-resident importer status and also a um, GST, HST number. And it's all basically the same number. It's just the programs that you're under. Can that all be done through your Amazon accounts when you want to expand to different countries? Because they're always asking you to expand to different countries. Are they offering those services or connections? So Amazon will oftentimes help you. So here's my, my take on Amazon. If they're calling you, answer the phone is the way I look at it. See what they have to say. Now, I don't want to disparage Amazon, but what I've come to find is the people at Amazon, they're always very well-intentioned, but they're siloed. So no one fully understands the whole journey as a seller that you're going to go through like another seller. So I'm happy to help walk people through that. If people, um, you know, have other friends that are doing it, you know, check with your other friends and get some advice as well. Uh, just because there are a lot of pieces that even some services, like let's say, you know, I know that there's freight forwarders that'll help you get registered in Canada or wherever country, but they may be not getting you into all the programs that you really should be in um, because they're looking at it from their standpoint of like, okay, to get stuff across the border, you need this, but maybe you also need something else that they didn't register you for because that's not necessarily their focus. And then Amazon, their focus is really, in my experience, the folks who are calling you saying, hey, sign up in wherever country, they're just trying to get you into that country. And then from there, it's okay, go for it. Okay. Uh, and first do the research on that country to make sure that your products are selling or something similar yes. is selling. You've got the buyers there. Okay. And how, how are you dealing with um, the taxes and registrations? Can you, can you cover that a little bit? We've had, uh, I've asked on the podcast talking about VAT. Can you talk briefly about the differences on how taxes work on products in the U.S. versus um, over in Europe? Okay. Well, I think the simplest way to look at it is you have two buckets of taxes. You have sales tax and you have income tax. So income tax, you're still most likely, as long as you're using your U.S.-based entity, you're going to still owe Uncle Sam assuming someone's from the US, um, but you're still gonna owe Uncle Sam for income taxes or whatever country you live in. So then in that country, there's gonna be some sort of tax on the sale. So it's whether it's the GST, the VAT, the whatever. So what's, what's GST stand for? Oh, sorry, goods and services tax, which is the, uh, the sales tax of Canada. So the nice yeah. thing about Canada yeah. is in most cases, uh, in my disclaimer here is I'm not a tax preparer, so please make sure that you check with an appropriate tax professional about your own situation. But what I found is for most people and in talking to people that do this uh, in the tax world um, is that you're most likely going to, in Canada, register for the goods and services tax and the harmonized sales tax. It's all just the same thing. Uh, basically federal tax and you file once per year, it gets added on to the sale just like here in the US. So if they live in a province where let's just say it's 8% and it's $20, then now 160 is added on and then you'll remit and file. And then you actually in Canada have a few ways that you can save money on what you're um, giving to the government because if you pay GST at the border um, or you know, some other way that you're paying, you can get uh, <clears throat> credits back. And then it works kind of the same way with credits back in Europe. Now, Europe is where it starts getting a little bit more complicated. So 
the simplest way to look at Europe is where is the inventory getting imported into and where is it being housed? So if it comes across a border, you have the requirement to file for VAT or to register and file for VAT in that country. If it's being housed in that country, you're required to register and file for that country. So I think the simplest way to do it in Europe is to go into um, the UK and then keep your inventory in just the UK and they'll allow you to do what's called the European Fulfillment Network and have your products shipped to the other four countries um, from the UK. Now, a lot of times what some people might steer you towards is what's called the pan-European program. Um, it's a little bit of savings, but I don't think it's really worth it because you save about a euro per fulfillment fee. And so you think, oh, wow, that's going to add up over time. So the going rate is probably about 7,200 euros per year to be tax compliant, to have somebody do all the tax filings for you. And then you end up with like, Amazon will put some of your uh, stock in Poland and the Czech Republic. Those aren't even countries where they have marketplaces, but they just store them there. So again, once it's stored in a country, now you have a VAT requirement and you might have to file, they're filing monthly for you and you have to pay. So you might have to pay the equivalent of like $10 or $8 some months to the Polish government. And it's just, it's almost like a, a little gnat on your side. And it's just like, it's just like, ah, why, why am I having to do this? Right. Um, so it's expensive. And what I came to learn is what I would say the best thing for most people is in Europe, you want to sign up for what's called the flat rate scheme. Now, when we think of taxes and scheme, we think about handcuffs and going to jail. Uh, but in Europe, scheme just means m calculation method. So in most cases, someone who's listening to this is most likely going to be um, an online retailer. And the basically the way it works is if let's say they sell a product in we'll say the UK for 12 pounds. The price is actually 10 pounds and two pounds of that is included in that because they're, the thing that's different about Europe is the price includes the VAT. So just to walk through that math there, so you would owe two pounds for that sale to the, uh, the government minus whatever you paid in and you know, at the border and whatever other VAT credits you had. Now, if you're on the flat rate scheme, you don't have to keep all your receipts for everything else. You just file seven and a half percent. So that, just to make the math simple there, using that 12 pound product, you really just, it's 10 pounds is what you're selling it for. So you would owe 7.5% of that, which would be 75 pence, which is like their pennies over there. Um, instead of having to figure out all that other nonsense of like credits and all that, what I found, and I could be completely wrong on this, is my accountants had told me there's not a flat rate scheme currently in the other countries. So if their VAT is 22 or 23%, you owe that full 22, 23% as opposed to, because if the, if basically the way it works is, instead of like in the US taxes based on sales taxes based on where the customer lives in Europe, it's where is it being dispatched from? So where are they shipping it from? So if everything's being shipped from the UK, you pay the equivalent that to the UK. Well, so that's a pretty substantial savings. You know, you're yep. saving, you know, if you're doing pan EU, you're saving a dollar or a Euro. Um, but the percentages that you're talking about could be pretty substantial in terms of yes. savings if you're shipping all from the UK. Plus it sounds like your life's going to be a little simpler too. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people don't expand or expand to the UK and then pull back because it is a little complicated if you do too much too fast. Uh, so I like your simple, simple approach here in terms of the flat rate scheme and, and sticking to the UK. Um, wh what are you finding in terms of uh, customer service and things of this nature? How do you handle that aspect of it when you're dealing with the European marketplace if you're, you know, an English speaking native? 
Great question. So there are services out there that will do customer service for you. Um, I've had translators make templates for me because there's, you know, a variety of issues that may come up. If you're, if you've been doing this a while, you kind of know what questions people are going to ask you. Right. Okay. Um, what also you can do, and this is uh, not necessarily something you have to worry too much about because at the end of the day, Amazon requires that there's customer service for that customer in the native language. If they're fulfilling it, they look at it pretty much as they're handling the customer service. So you will get some emails from time to time that you know you have to respond to within 24 hours, just like you do in the US. And so I sometimes will take the message, put it in Google Translate, see what it is in English, and then I flip it around. So if I'm going back from English to, let's say, Italian, I then write my response, copy and paste the Italian or whatever language I'm using, send it to the customer. And I've not really had anyone write back and say, I can't believe you just said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it does work in many cases. Uh, I did like it. I, I, I did like it. It was an in-depth, long conversation about soccer and kids and family with an Uber driver in France where it doesn't work. But oh, sure yeah. simple customer service, uh, it does work fairly well. Yeah. If like my, my, my product didn't arrive, okay, we'll send you a new one. Usually that, that type of thing works pretty well and you can figure out and they can figure out what you mean. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. So Kevin, you've gone from living in the corporate world to being an entrepreneur. Now you've got 80 different SKUs and you're also, you've got the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. You're helping other people expand internationally as well. Mm -hmm. um, are you doing that through Maximizing E-Commerce? How do, how do they, anybody listening that maybe just bought a business and wants to expand internationally, is it a service that you offer to help people go beyond the U.S.? Yes. So what they could do is if they wanted to go beyond the U.S., um, actually for your listeners, I'd be willing to do a free 30-minute strategy session, no obligation. Um, they could just go to maximizingecommerce.com forward slash quiet, and it'll take them to a, a page where they can schedule something with me. Just looking for people that, of course, that have an existing business. Um, if they're looking to get started, I'll give them a free checklist on how to uh, get their first product, kind of like how I did. Awesome. Um, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Okay. Yes. And then also, if they wanted to um, hear more live, uh, you and I will be hanging out together in September in Fort Worth at Brand Accelerator Live. And I will be speaking about selling internationally. And then Quiet Light will be there um, as a sponsor. And then you, I will plug you as well. You will be uh, on stage speaking about um, how to maximize your sale if you're looking to grow or sell your business one day. Yeah, for folks listening that don't know some of the names we've talked about, Scott Volker is uh, an entrepreneur, an influencer, a speaker, um, a motivator. He's got the podcast, The Amazing Seller. Scott's uh, local to me, sort of in South Carolina. He's got a place up here in North Carolina. Um, and uh, Kevin's working with him on Brand Accelerator Live, which is Scott's first big event. He's bringing in the best people in the marketplace, uh, Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout, uh, Mike Jackness from Ecom Crew, and a whole lot of other folks. Um, I'm, I'm sort of in the very, very low tier of those folks. But Greg and Mike and the other folks like that are very, very well known. We're really excited that you're gonna be there. Well, so. thank you, thank you. Um, but it's a place where I've, I've heard, in, in terms of the Amazing Seller Podcast and what you're doing with Scott, it's a, um, it's a place where I've, I've talked to so many people that get such value to grow, not, and this is the thing, grow their Amazon business, but take it beyond Amazon as well mm -hmm. and learn about how to market off of Amazon and Shopify and email marketing and Facebook and things of that nature and in the affiliate world and blog world and all that stuff. So I think Scott's done an amazing job with that. I love that you're working with him on this first event. Uh, we're excited to be there. Anybody that hasn't looked it up yet, it's, it's Brand Accelerator Live. Is that right? Yeah, Brand Accelerator Live. Then go to brandaccelerator.live.com. And, you know, if, if someone's listening to this and saying, well, I've never been to a live event before, whether it's Brand Accelerator Live or something else, if they're listening to this in the future, 
go to something. You never know what's going to come out of it. So yeah, I, I'm, so I'm going to interrupt and say, yes, that's absolutely true. You know, when I first started doing what I do here at Quiet Light, I had to go to an event. I think the first one I went to was in New Orleans. I can't even remember. It was a big event and I hated it because I didn't want, you know, I'm a bit of an introvert. Doing this right now, talking, podcast, it's great. It's easy. Uh, I'm a bit of an introvert, but uh, I, I was at an event. I forget exactly where it was. And I'd heard the name Mike Jackness. And I said to myself, I'm going to find Mike. And I went to the pre-party mm-hmm. and I saw Mike sitting there on a couch. And I sat down beside, said hello. And now Mike and I are really good friends. I sold his business. We've done podcasts together. Uh, we've got a lot of relationships in terms of people we know together. Um, and I, I think he's made an impact on my life and my business. And I've hopefully made the same on his. And when you see people, you go to an event like this and you see people standing around in a circle talking to each other and you don't know who they are, mm-hmm. your instant thought is, oh, they all know each other. I don't want to step in there. That's really awkward. The reality is, is that they don't know each other. They're just getting to know each other. Right. And I've been in a situation where literally I'm standing around like that. Somebody walks up and just sort of, you know, shoulders their way in and starts nodding their head up and down and mm-hmm. says hello. And we had all just met each other and he came in and, and, and met us as well. So it's a hard thing to do. But I think in this e-commerce world, listening to podcasts like this is invaluable. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing you can do is get out there and meet people face to face and shake their hand. And then you can connect with them directly about what they're doing in their business and what you're trying to do in yours. And in this case, with you taking, you know, Amazon businesses beyond the US and into the other marketplaces and a strategic process on how to do that so that you're going to have a higher success rate. So anybody listening, get out there and go to a mastermind event, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, Brent Accelerator Live is not going to be a, a, a large one. It's down in Fort Worth in mm-hmm. September. What are the dates on it? September September 18th through the 20th. And then we also have a mastermind for high-level sellers on the 21st. And we still have a, a couple slots available for those mastermind folks. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend that you go to something. So to your point, like, you know, sometimes people have that feeling like, oh gosh, it's going to be hard, like connecting with people. I remember the first e-commerce event I went to and I walk into the opening reception and I go to the bar and I kind of have like that feeling of like, okay, there's safety at the bar. The bartender's giving me the drink. Unless you're in Mexico or the Dominican Republic, but yeah, okay. Right, exactly. Exactly. Sorry. This is a Fort Lauderdale. So I turn around and I'm like, okay, now I have to go, like, what do I do? I have to like talk to someone. So there was this woman standing there and I was just like, hi. I'm Kevin. And then we just started talking and, you know, I still keep in contact with her to this day. And I started talking to some other people. And so just a a random story here is that at it, at this live event, I got to know Scott Volker and met him at another live event because there's that power and connection when you're meeting people live as opposed to even on the phone or, you know, messaging them in Facebook groups or whatever the case is. And he was talking about how he wanted to do more to help people in that intermediate to advanced stage. And I like to think of the world as kind of like a puzzle with pieces that all have to come together. Hence why I do this international thing. And I used to work in hotels and conventions. So I told him, I think you should do a live event and I can help you with it because I had that experience. And he, I was thinking like, he's going to say, Oh no, I thought about it, whatever. Thank you graciously. Cause he's a nice guy, but he actually said, yes, tell me more. How do we, how would we do this? And so this has become an opportunity that's opened up doors for me. Um, because I talked to Scott and I know all kinds of people, maybe it's not Scott Volker that they're connected with, but someone who opened up some door, connected them to a supplier. They found out some like I never knew about that service or that whatever. And it, you know, opened up their mind to something else because they were having a conversation over drinks, breaking bread, or just talking to someone in between sessions at a live event because e-commerce sellers for the most part, especially the ones that are doing it full time, if they're at their house or whatever, and they're just in front of a keyboard all day, they want to connect with other people or if they're doing it as a full time, they have a full time job. They are like, wait, I, 
I don't know anyone else that does this. And so all of a sudden it's like surrounded by people that all do the same thing. And most e-commerce sellers are not surrounded all day by other e-commerce sellers. So it's like a, a treat being in the same room. Yeah. And you'd be amazed when you connect with folks like that, um, how you, you, you figure out after a time that, Oh, there's, there's a, a half a dozen people uh, in my surrounding area. And then you can have a mini sort of mastermind exactly. group. We just get together uh, for drinks once a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I think, I think really important. Um, number one, thank you for your time in helping people my figure pleasure. out how to expand beyond amazon.com because it, it's going to bring more value for uh, their, their bank account and an eventual sale as well. It's going to bring more value. But um, for, for those folks that haven't done it, get to a live event, meet people mm -hmm. face to face. It will make a difference. Uh, in your in your business and in your life, in my uh, opinion and experience, it's hard to do. I tell you, it is hard to do. It's, you know, what do I do now that I've got this drink in my hand? You turn around and you say hello to someone and you stick your hand out. Exactly. And you end up being uh, being amazed with uh, what what value you give and get in that situation. Um, again, maximizing ecommerce.com, brandaccelerativelive.com. Kevin, you're a good man. I appreciate your time and I look forward Thank to you. seeing you in September. I'm excited for it. Thanks for having me. Oh, 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 oh,